Hello and welcome to Wellness Wednesday Live. I am Bethany Zell and I'm the Program Director for Healthy You at Cary Medical Center. And I am joined today by Nikki Busmanis, who is the Program Manager of 211 Maine. Welcome, Nikki. Hi, thank you for having me. Thank you so much for being here. And our whole theme for the month of April with the Healthy You program, we're focusing on public health. And so I know that 211 Maine offers a lot of fantastic resources and makes public health initiatives and public health resources more accessible to the people of Maine. So I'm going to turn this over to you and let you share what you do with 211 Maine. Well, thank you so much for, for having me, Bethany. So again, my name is Nikki Busmanis. I manage the 211 Maine program for the United Ways of Maine. I am gonna walk through some slides. I think it's helpful to, for you to have some visuals um, and I'm really excited to, to share 211 with you. So first, just to set the stage, not knowing what all of your backgrounds are, um, you may or may not know this, but for a lot of us in Maine, it can be really hard to find help for programs from programs across the state. You know, it's hard to tell, you know, what are you eligible for? What's um, covered by your insurance? What might be available near you? Um, and there are lots of different programs available across the state, really incredible partners um, and services that really help the spectrum of health and human services. Uh, but it can be hard to figure out which one you need, which one might be appropriate for one of your friends or a family member, even a coworker. Uh, and so for a lot of us, we really need that opportunity to have a, a conversation with someone and say, this is what's going on. How, how do I find help? What's available near me? And with all of that in mind, that's where 211 really comes into play. So at our most basic, we are at 211 Maine, a free confidential program that helps people find local resources that help them stay healthy, safe, and independent. We say we're an information and referral line, but basically what that means is people can reach out to us at 211 and we work with them to find local resources from heating assistance to um, substance use resources. It could be mental health support, transportation, food pantries, veteran support services, really think of all of those different types of programs that can help someone meet their basic needs and thrive. And that's what we help people find. So we're an initiative of the United Ways of Maine, and uh, we work in really close partnership with the State of Maine Department of Health and Human Services, as well as some other departments. Uh, they're just a great partner for us and really help us make sure that we're available across the state. So the way it works is we have a database of thousands of those resources, again, across, um, across the spectrum of health and human services. And we have a team of resource coordinators and their sole mission in life is to update the information in that directory. So when someone reaches out for help, we're able to find them accurate information. And we have a team of uh, contact center specialists, as we call them, two on one specialists based here in Maine that are available 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. So any time of day, night, weekend, holiday, you name it, anytime someone reaches out to 211 here in Maine, they automatically connect to a live person here in Maine on the other end of the line. Now, I really think that's important. Um, I'm one of those people that if I'm calling, you know, customer service for, for something, I hit zero because I just want to talk to a person. Um, and as I talked about earlier, for a lot of the different needs that people have and don't know where to go for, they really need that, that conversation piece. And so that's really where we shine. And 211, it's actually a national model. Um, and uh, many other 211s outsource their after hours and weekends and holidays. But in Maine, it was really important to the United Ways of Maine that we keep this as local as possible. And so that's why anytime you reach out to us here in Maine, uh, here at 211 Maine, excuse me, you get a live person here in Maine. So th there are three primary ways that people are able to reach out and either connect with our specialists or search the online directory. So first, and what people are probably the most familiar with is dialing 211. So if you call 211, again, you connect with our Maine-based specialist 24-7. If you haven't done this before, I really encourage you to try it. It is so easy, so user-friendly. 
Um, the only automated part of, of the call experience is when you first call, um, you get a machine that says, thank you for calling 211, press four for questions about COVID-19, five for substance use resources, six for all other calls, something like that. Um, and then after that, you automatically connect with our specialists. And they are not going to ask you a million questions. Uh, they're not going to ask you for your social security number or, um, you know, really, you know, any that kind of like really in-depth information. They'll ask you your name if you're comfortable doing giving that. Um, and they'll ask you your zip code. And that's really so that we can look for as local resources as possible because we know transportation and time can be can be barriers for people to get help. Um, and then they'll, they'll ask your veteran status, um, because that may impact if you're eligible for certain programs. And that's pretty much it, you know, maybe what type of insurance you have, or if, if you are insured, depending on what you're looking for. Um, but we try to make it as low barrier, a, a, a service as possible so that when people reach out, we're able to get them the information they need and get them on their way to being able to start their journey of being healthy and safe and independent. So again, you can call 211. Uh, you can also text with us. And I get really excited about this. Uh, you can text your zip code to 898-211 and you automatically subscribe, or excuse me, you automatically connect to those same main base specialists 24 seven. Um, we launched the text platform a few years ago now and I just get really excited because I think it's just another way that we are being ex as accessible to people as possible. You know, some people are fine calling. Uh, I'm one of those people, I, I don't mind talking on the phone, but we also know there are some people who aren't comfortable vocalizing their need or in a safe place to do it. They may not have minutes on their phone. Um, they uh, may not have a pen and paper to write down the information that they're given. So trying to address some of those potential barriers, it's really helpful to have the text option. And then lastly, uh, you can go to 211main.org and search the online directory yourself. So this is a great option for people who kind of already know what they're looking for or have an idea. Um, but again, if you're using the online directory, you can also always, uh, and you, if you can't find what you're looking for, you can always call or text. Um, you can also go from call to text. So if you're on the phone with a specialist and say, um, you know, I really don't have anything I can write down uh, the information with, can you text it to me? Uh, they can do that for you as well. And this is, I just wanted to share, this is what our website looks like. So when you go to 211main.org, uh, you can search in a couple of different ways. You can select a need. Uh, this could be anything from housing to, um, uh, family services, it could be basic needs, and, and then you can really drill down to a type of situation as well as your zip code. Um, or you can search by keyword. And when you click that keyword option, it'll either, it'll pre-populate with a couple of uh, suggestions, but you can also just type in what you're looking for. So we're really excited about the online platform as well, because this is brand new. Uh, we launched this um, uh, early fall or late summer, and it's just so much more user-friendly uh, than our, our last website. So I encourage you to go to 211main.org and look at this as well. Now, I'm not going to drown you in data, I promise, but I think it's really helpful to see kind of the volume of calls that we get at 211. So these are statewide. This graph shows you the blue is our last fiscal year, uh, and the yellow is uh, the, the following. And so you can see that we were pretty much steady from the last couple of years. And then in March of 2020, we really saw our volume uh, increase significantly. It tripled. Uh, and that lasted all summer and into the fall as well. And we still see a significant increase. And that's in large part due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, so we're getting a lot of calls from people with questions about COVID. Um, you know, how do I prevent it? What is it? Uh, where can I get tested? What's the latest travel advisory? Um, and now a lot about uh, the vaccination distribution. But then we also get a lot of call, I have gotten a lot of calls from people for the first time. Um, we're known as that place to go when you don't know where else to go. 
So there were a number of people this past year that because of the pandemic found themselves in, in new territory because they may have had all of those natural supports and programs in place um, where they didn't need anything formal to, to help them, whether it's through food assistance or um, transportation or what have you, but because of the pandemic, they, they needed help. Um, and so they reached out to 211. And in Aroostook County specifically, we saw the top three reasons that people had called us um, in uh, the previous year were for rent assistance, financial assistance, and substance use support. So rent, finances, and substance use. That's what we're seeing. And again, you know, we're that place where people go and they don't know where else to go. So that tells us that there are individuals in your community that either for themselves or someone they know needed that extra help. So I'm gonna take a couple of minutes to walk through some initiatives that 211 is involved in, um, in addition to providing information and referrals about resources um, for things like heating assistance or um, food resources, what have you. So probably the most relevant right now is our COVID-19 contact support. So we, um, since before the pandemic started, have worked with Maine CDC on a number of projects. Um, and so when the pandemic was coming into the U.S. and nearing uh, entering uh, Maine, we met with them and said, how can we help? You know, we're within our scope of services. What can 211 do to, to help the state and the people of Maine? Um, and so as a 24-7 contact center, we got trained um, and have access to the, the um, consistent information that the state is sending out. Um, and people have been able to call 211, text with us, email us, um, and we're able to answer those general basic questions about COVID. Um, and to date, we've, we've received over 70,000 contacts. Uh, so it's definitely utilized. And then people can also subscribe to receive automatic text updates. So if you text ME COVID to 898-211, you automatically subscribe and get these text updates. It's like, you know, maybe three or four a week. Um, and it's everything from the latest travel advisories, um, the latest on vaccine distributions, um, any messaging from the government, uh, that kind of thing. So uh, I encourage you, if this is something that interests you and you want to uh, stay current and up to date, text ME COVID to 898-211. We do have a number of other initiatives we're involved in. I won't go through all of them, um, but uh, just to show you kind of the breadth of services that 211 helps people find. So one way we're able to do this is with our relationship with the crisis lines and with 911 emergency. So if someone contacts 211 and they're in a crisis and um, it's more appropriate for them to speak with one of those trained lines, we don't say, oh, well, here's the number for the mental health crisis line. Please let us know if you need anything else. Uh, have a good day, uh, which is typically we provide that information and it's on the individual really to follow up. But if they're in a crisis, we try to look at that, you know, address that barrier and say, okay, within our abilities, what can we do? And we can provide a direct transfer to those appropriate lines for them. Um, I, I think it's so important if someone is in a situation and they can't remember the, the crisis line number that they need and they just need help, uh, we wanna make it as easy as possible for them to get um, connected to it. We also do things like um, answer frequently asked questions about brown tail moth caterpillars, everything from prevention and treatment and mitigation. Um, we also serve as the state's opiate helpline. So anyone looking for an opiate related service can contact 211, uh, we'll provide again, totally confidential, free referrals to resources near them. Um, and we'll also offer to follow up with the individual in a couple of days. This is totally voluntary and optional, um, but we wanted, we wanted to uh, make it available for folks looking for this type of resource um, so that if they weren't able to access help, how can we look at uh, alternatives? Are there other resources we can provide them? And if someone discloses that they're pregnant, using drugs and ready to engage in treatment will also offer to do a direct transfer to a provider for them. We work really closely with the United Ways of Maine and their Keep Me Warm Fund. 
and we provide emergency heating assistance to individuals across the state. Um, so these are really for those situations where, you know, it's after hours, um, someone may not qualify for specific programs um, and kind of fall through the cracks and we try to help them. Um, and then we've worked with the main Bureau of Veteran Services really to, um, to get uh, to address stigma around asking for help in the veteran community and making sure that they're aware that this is an option for them. So I did wanna share just, um, we have lots of materials available uh, that highlight 211. These are not to scale, uh, but this is everything from rat cards on the, le on the left corner. We have lawn signs on the right, uh, magnets and post-it notes and wallet cards. So if they're of interest to, to you um, or your organization, please reach out to 211 Maine and we can get them for you. And if you are a provider of a health or human service here in Maine, we really encourage you to make sure that your information in the directory is as accurate as possible. So as I mentioned earlier, we have a team of resource coordinators who are the ones uh, reaching out to providers to review information um, and make sure everything's accurate. It's free for a provider to be listed in the 211 main directory. Our expectation is that they will review their listing at least once a year for accuracy. But what we know is that uh, information often changes more than one time a year. So we encourage providers, if it's outside, even if it's outside of their update window, to reach out and let us know that there's a change. Or if you're aware of, if you are on 211 or you get a referral and um, something's outdated, uh, let us know. And our resource team, they're wonderful. They can reach out to the providers and initiate that conversation. Uh, so we really encourage providers and, and the community to help us do that. So I just spent some time talking with you about how wonderful this program is, uh, because I really believe it. Um, but I, I want to make it clear, set clear expectations. We're not uh, the be all end all answer to every question or need. Uh, we have our own limitations. We can't make up resources that don't exist, uh, which sounds silly. But um, a lot of times if someone tries two and one and then says it doesn't work and, and I have more of a conversation, it's often that, well, there wasn't, they didn't have anything for me where I needed it, um, which is really a shame, but not, um, you know, we can't make up a resource, but we can find out that that's an unmet need and report that back out to the United Ways of Maine and the state and other funders so that they know as well. Um, and uh, we can't force providers to accept someone. Uh, they may be running a wait list um, or what have you, but you know, we're a really good starting point to help someone find, you know, find that first resource or that second resource that might help them or a loved one uh, get on that path to uh, being healthy and safe and independent. I've used 2 on one myself, myself personally and professionally. Um, I've had referrals that didn't pan out and I've had other referrals that changed my life. So it really, uh, it's really a great program. It's all about people. That's why we have main specialists answering the phones, answering those texts, maintaining that directory. Uh, and it, I really encourage you to try it. So with that, uh, Bethany, I don't know if there are any questions. Thank you so much. And wow, what I, I mean, I've been handling the majority of our Cary Medical Center listings for 211 Maine for a few years now. And I guess I never even really realized how comprehensive it was. But I, there are so many things I love. I love that you get a live person 24 seven, a live person right here in Maine who knows the state you're calling from. They know potentially the towns you're talking about when you're asking for these resources, because, you know, it may not feel like a big deal and it may feel like we're all just so interconnected right now through this pandemic that anybody anywhere can find any information they want, but there's something to be said about that connection in Maine. Um, yeah. So I absolutely love that. And I love the no wrong number philosophy too, like really just helping to bridge that gap right there, because especially um, where you've seen your, your traffic triple since the pandemic. And I'm sure some of those were very delicate situations that it takes a lot of courage sometimes to make those calls to ask for help. And, you know, to get over that initial barrier to be told, 
hey, you got the wrong number, you know, they may not call even if you give them the right information. So I love that you guys try and help as much as you can in those moments. Um, I wasn't familiar with the texting thing. When did the text feature begin? We started that in partnership with the state. Um, it must have been the spring or summer of 2018. So it's been a few years, um, but it took, you know, it's taken some time to really get the, the outreach and marketing about it. But again, I, I'm a huge uh, advocate for looking at new ways to be accessible. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, you know, we tried to look at what are those potential barriers for someone to call? Um, you know, and I, you know, initially, immediately I thought, well, what if someone's not in a safe place to say what, what's going on? Mm -hmm. um, how do we make it as easy? Or some people, you know, around the stigma piece, um, it can be really hard to ask for help. Really and so can. if they don't feel comfortable, even though it's confidential, even though it's free, if they don't feel comfortable yet calling, let's, you know, having that text option is great because it still allows for the community, for the conversational piece. Mm. And you're meeting them where their need is like, really, yeah. you're, you know, they can't talk on the phone. They can look it up online. You, they mm -hmm. can text it. They don't have to hear a voice or, or even use their own voice if they're not comfortable. So that's so awesome. The funny thing uh, that to me about uh, the calls is that I, I've had the specialists tell me before that uh, when they've answered calls before, the person is surprised first when it's a person, and then they they almost quiz the specialist uh, to, oh, you you say you're in Maine? What's the mm -hmm. weather like? <laughs> like, tell me the truth. Where are, are you, are you to, really? <laughs> they're used to to those models of call centers where where they're outsourced, yeah. um, which is fine. But for for our program, like I said, it was really intentional for the United Ways of Maine to say, we want this as local as possible. How can we make this sustainable here in Maine? Uh, and, and that's where we're at. Mm, I love it. And I know you put some statistics about a rustic up there. Are those statistics that are available for all the counties available on yes. the website? Where could people go to find out information pertinent to their neck of the woods? Absolutely. So all of this is available on 211main.org. On the about tab, if you click on about, uh, on the right hand column, uh, in the right hand column, there's a, a section where you can click on reports by year. And then within that, it breaks it out by month. You can look at the call data by county, statewide. Um, and uh, we also, there are a few other ways too. You can go to our 211 counts. It's a national dashboard we're a part of. Um, there's a blog post on our on our website. If you go to 211main.org and click on news, I think it's one of the latest posts. Okay. It outlines kind of the different ways, but all of this data is publicly available. And if you have any trouble finding it or um, you're looking for something more customizable, uh, let us know because um, we actually, we work with a lot of, um, you know, whether it's health systems or nonprofits uh, that are doing, you know, needs assessments. It helps inform grant writing um, to, to see, again, we're just one, one point of contact for folks looking for help, but um, it paints a really interesting picture, uh, really, really informative good. too. And I'll definitely be sure I'll link some of those, those okay. things that you've mentioned in your video into the video um, comments and description so that it'll make it a little more accessible. But mm -hmm. I love that information that I'm kind of a data geek. And so I love <laughs> kind of knowing like where, where are the biggest issues. And so, you know, and I know that that's pretty um, widespread across Maine that we find, we'll find some overlap between the counties and the different areas, but then each area will have its unique things as well. It's so funny. When I first came to 211, um, I've been here with the program for over four years now. And in my first few months, I actually went up to uh, Presque Isle and I was meeting with a group and doing my presentation. I had looked at other counties and in the top three categories of need, mental health. That was top everywhere, except mm -hmm. at that time in Aroostook County. And I said, congratulations, mental health isn't an issue here. You know, tell me your secret. Um, and uh, the folks were kind enough to say, well, that's not quite it. If you have a mental health need right now, you know where to go. 
You know, they had a couple of really prominent uh, agencies and, and groups that people knew about and were familiar with. So we weren't seeing those calls. And it was really a, a reminder to me that we're that place that people will turn to when they don't know where else to go. Right. But I'm so thankful that that it's available and there for people. And I I don't really have any other questions, but I think it's worth repeating, especially in light of, you know, the trust factor and people, you know, preying on the worries and the fears of our main residents. And I think it just bears some importance in repeating that 211 Maine will never ask for your personal information more than your name, your zip code, and maybe your veteran status and insurance status just to help identify those resources closest to you. And so, um, you know, that's a message I think that just needs to be continually put forward, you know, where those trusted resources are and, you know, to be very mindful and aware of what information you're giving out to people. Um, and I Absolutely. guess I would add, if you're ever wondering and curious and you like if, for example, someone calls you and, they're saying that they're from someone legitimate that you might be familiar with, call back, hang up, say, I hang will up. call back, hang up, yes. look up the national number or the number that you know, and call back and talk to a person. Um, and obviously if someone's calling into 211 Maine, they know that they're calling you legitimately, but be aware, people won't ask for your private information that shouldn't be shared, so. No, no, and, and we really pride ourselves on that. The fact that we are as low barrier a resource um, as possible so that, because there are often times where people will call 211 and they may not be in a crisis, but they are near there and they just want the information, you know, I need to know where I can get food right now. And then they wanna get that information and then, okay, bye and go. And they wanna start finding, getting that resource. So we try to be, really respectful of callers um, and their time. There are some times that people will call and they want to have a longer conversation. They want to share more about, you know, I don't know what it's called that I need help with, but, you know, here's my situation. And our specialists are, I mean, they are kind and compassionate. Um, if you go to our YouTube channel, um, it's linked on our website, 211main.org, down at the bottom. Uh, you, can, you can find our Facebook page as well as our YouTube channel. But our YouTube channel has a couple of videos that highlight some of our specialists, uh, Carol and Terry, and they are just kind and, um, you know, they will listen to you. They won't judge you. And it's, you know, you just, you feel comfortable immediately talking with them. So I, I encourage folks to look at those too. And I think that's important, you know, especially, you know, knowing the barriers that people take to make those calls in the first place. And you don't really know what's going on, um, whether they're in that safe place or in a dangerous situation or a crisis situation. And so it's good to have the right people there to be answering and on the other end of the line when people call. So I thank you for, for all that you guys do. And I don't know if you have anything else you'd like to add to round out the conversation. No, I, I, again, I encourage people uh, to reach out, uh, either call, text, go to 211main.org. Um, and again, it's a great resource for yourselves or for someone you know. Um, we'll oftentimes hear from folks on behalf of someone else, uh, whether it's an aging parent, a coworker that you might be um, you know, close with or concerned about, could be a neighbor, um, you know, we're, we're there. Uh, so we're any time of day or night, any day of the week, whenever you're ready to, to reach out uh, for help for yourself or someone you know, uh, we're there for you. Great. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Nikki. Thank you for sharing this wonderful program with us and for all the work that you do for the state of Maine. Thank you. And for those watching, we hope you'll tune back in in May on the second and fourth Wednesday of the month at 1 p.m. for our next Wellness Wednesday live segments. We'll see you then. Thank you.